Hey there, welcome to my channel. You're here for another collab. This collab is called Meatless Monday. Now, our hostess is Denise over at Dish with D, and she came up with this idea because there's lots of reasons people like to go meatless. For myself, especially when the kids were home and growing up, we would have, I call them meatless main. That is the category in my cookbook. That's just what I've always called it, a meatless main, because it's the main dish and it's meatless. And so that told me right away <laughs> what it is. Simplistic as it may be, it works. We did it to save money. Bottom line, not because we don't like meat, because we are big meat eaters in this house. Just to save money for at least one day a week on the grocery budget when the kids were home. Okay, some of you, you're vegetarian. You never eat meat. Here's a bunch of ideas for you because you've got seven days a week. You have to plant. Can I just tell you, I'm not even going to change this video. If you watch my channel, you know. <laughs> As I was saying, if you watch my channel, you know that it seems like every time I get on here to film, that blasted phone rings. See, we're one of the few people on the planet that still has a landline. <laughs> we don't like giving our cell phone out unless we somebody we want to talk to. And somehow it still gets out. But anyway, that's not why you're here. Wherever I was, re reasons some people go meatless. I think I was saying vegetarians, you have seven days a week that you have to plan for. That's a lot of meals. So this will give you some good ideas. Then Lent is coming up. There's a lot of you that probably observe Lent. So here's just some ideas for that. And then some people, they're just, for whatever reason, they're just trying to limit their consumption of meat. All these reasons, you're here to find lots of new ideas. I don't know what everybody's making right off the bat, but I did read some, and it's a bunch of good stuff. So this is what you have to do. When you get through watching me, you have to go down in the description box, and you have to visit everybody. That's your homework. You have to do it. <laughs> you have to go see what everybody has to offer. You get through with one person, then go on to the next one. And if you like what you see, and I hope you do, including here, if you're not already subscribed, then subscribe. We we love to have you. We love to have you comment. Y'all know the drill. We say it every time. But I guess we feel like we need to every time. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Hit the like. Comment below. All that good stuff. So, now I think that's all I'm going to say coming up we're just gonna cook I'm making I guess I could tell you what I'm making I'm making spinach lasagna roll-ups and these are some things that I used to make back when the kids were home a lot of stuff in my cookbook comes from when the kids were home because that's when I did most of my cooking after they left I got a little slack on that so I'm not as good um, cooking cooking up a bunch of whole stuff like I used to Maybe to the dismay of my husband. But anyway, this is one that I made back when they were home. And we really liked it. And so when the topic of meatless came up, I knew exactly what I was going to make. So that's all I'm going to say. Let's just go start cooking. <laughs> Bye. Okay, let's get started on our spinach lasagna roll-ups. I have a medium-sized pan already um, preheated on the stove. We're just going to add just a touch. I, I like to use olive oil. You can use whatever kind of oil you like. Now, this is four large, about that big, mushroom caps. You can use the stems. I just don't prefer the stems. If you don't want to use these, I just happen to have them on hand for salads. You can also use canned. That's what I used to use um, back in the day when I made... I think I got a little bit more oil than I want. You know what? I don't want to add that to my bacon grease. I'm going to use this. I don't want this to be so oily. I was a little heavy handed. I'll get another one for my cheese. That'll be that'll be good enough right there. Um, I used to use canned mushrooms. If you do, use a four ounce can, drain it, and chop them like this. If you don't use the pieces the stems and pieces I think it's called then just chop them up smaller because we don't want big old chunks of mushrooms in our roll up so this is what I'm going to do to my onions 
I keep this in my fridge. You much know that. But I chop these kind of big. You want about a half an onion's worth. And I just need these just a little bit smaller. So we're going to use four ounces of mushrooms. Or like I said, I've got... I'm going to burn it. My M.O. Burning the food. I am not a master chopper, if y'all can tell. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be good enough. Maybe I should put a little bit more of that oil in there. So anyway, add your onions. They'll start sweating off and giving you a little bit of moisture. And also, we want to add about two cloves worth. I just use in the can in the jar. Normally, I just shake it, but this is so far down in the bottom and stuck. I'm afraid that's more than two cloves, but we're good. I'm afraid that would shake the whole thing in there. So all we're gonna do is, first of all, turn the burner down. I thought I had. Oh, no wonder it's sizzling. I thought my burner, I thought my burner was down. You just want to saute until the mushrooms and the onions are soft. And after that, I will be back in. Okay. The next step is to make the filling. The filling is what we just cooked up. The mushrooms, the onions, and the garlic. I'm putting it in this measuring cup because I want to see how many tablespoons it is. Now, I apologize for the mangled up. <laughs> I just used a box. Remember the old way spinach came was only in a box? Now, I'm dating myself. This is a 10 ounce box and they still have these in some stores. If you cannot find a 10 ounce box, just buy a bag and measure it out. What I did, I forgot to take it out and thaw it. You just want it thawed. So I popped it in the microwave in a covered dish. I did it for five minutes, which was too long. So I ran some cold water over it to cool it off where I could touch it. And I squeezed it dry, just as dry as I could get it. And that's how much that condenses down to. So 10 ounces of very dry, um, not spaghetti. It's not spaghetti. Spinach. <laughs> I couldn't think what in the world it was. Then this is just, yeah, ricotta cheese. And this is made with part skim milk. You can use whichever kind you like. Just adjust your points. So it's one cup of this. I guess I could have had this measured out already. And then all we got to do is set everything aside is just to stir this up really, really well. I have often thought I made this, like I told you, when we would make meatless meals when the kids were little and I have thought well I've never tried it I don't know but you know they make jumbo shells I have often thought of filling the jumbo shells I think that would be good okay so we got it all combined so let me push this down in here so I can get a better idea We have, let me hold it up. That is one and two thirds cups. 12, 13, 14 ounces. Hold on, you know what I'm gonna do? Alexa. Okay, so Alexa tells me eight servings is three and a half tablespoons. So we're just gonna do three and we're gonna guesstimate that other half and keep our fingers crossed. 
Now, this, hold on, pull this over. This is just, oh, my box is over there. You know what a lasagna box looks like. You just need eight noodles. I boiled 10 or 11 because you know how sometimes when you mess with them, you have them break. And I just want to make, make sure that I had enough um, ones that were not broken. So make sure you have at least eight lasagna noodles. So I'm just going to set this pan down. Now you do not need a 9 by 13. I am crossing my fingers that this size dish is going to work. Also, preheat your oven to 350. I always forget to tell that part. You need two cups of any spaghetti sauce you want. I have the zero point marinara that I keep in the freezer. And it's funny, it's almost two cups on the nose, the amounts I freeze it in. I freeze it in the 32 ounce um, yogurt containers, because you know, we all have those. And so it just makes the perfect, it's not as big as a jar of spaghetti sauce. But when I make my spaghetti in the Instant Pot, or even just to put on top of the pasta, I've never noticed a, a huge difference. So just spoon you a little bit on the bottom. You know what? I didn't get the tablespoon, did I? So I'm going to show you one, maybe two. Just get your little noodle. And we're going to put our filling right in the center. little half. I'll tell you, I hope little Alexa didn't steer me wrong because it just doesn't look like it's <laughs> going to be enough. <laughs> Listen, it would just be par for my course. Just kind of, you can use a spoon if you want to. This something like this, it's just as easy to poke it around with your finger. If you get some on the outside, it's not going to really hurt. So just take it should have gone this way. Don't go all the way to the end. Can y'all see me? Okay. Because it will squeeze out. So when you roll it, roll it tight enough to make contact, but not tight enough to squeeze out, as it appears it is trying to do. If it does, I'm going to show you what we do. wrap that don't don't keep squeezing it just wrap that little bit up and that little bit that comes out that's not gonna hurt anything so just put it right in your dish with the seam down I don't think I need to roll another one to show you I think you got the idea so I'm gonna cut this off roll these up and then I'll be back okay if you notice there are only seven <laughs> roll-ups what did I tell you a while ago that's how you know you're at my channel I apparently was a little heavy handed on my tablespoons. I also calculated 14 fluid ounces when it should be one and a half, one and two thirds cup solid. So it made a difference in two tablespoons. Two tablespoons over that is a lot. So it would make it three and a quarter tablespoons per roll up which is three tablespoons plus one teaspoon so just be sure don't make the mistake i did it's been a long time since i made these and i never measure weight i just scooped them out there that you measure better than i did don't go so heavy handed get you a better idea of what a spoonful is so my points will have changed for this but if you follow the recipe and make eight this is five points per roll up on all three plans. Now the next step is just pour over the spaghetti sauce. Now if you use anything other than 
zero point, that's going to take your points up. This is not necessarily a super low point dish, but I'm just going to have one. I'm going to pair it with a nice big salad, and I think it'll be just fine. Of course, you pair it with a zero point salad, and if you want a ten point supper, go ahead and have two of them. <laughs> that's how this program works. Okay. Then, well, I'm collecting quite a mess over here in my kitchen. The last thing we have to do is measure out four ounces of cheese. Calls for a cup, but sometimes it's hard to get a cup um, just right. So I'm just going to go by the ounce and make a mess doing it. Apologize right now for this hot mess. See, one cup would not do near what weighing. Okay, as you can see, while you were gone, I made a teetotal mess. Terrible. I got four ounces on the dock. You see how much more that is than a measure of a cup full? So, sometimes it pays to weigh. You know what? I'm not going to waste that. I'll wash that later. Now this, I'm going to waste. I'm not going to scoop that up. So then all we're going to do is take our four ounces of cheese. Now, you can cut your points by cutting your cheese. You can only use half the cheese if you want. Seems like th this is um, part skim. I didn't show you. Low moisture part skin mozzarella. Finely shredded. Sometimes I like that. I think it just coats better. So if you want to cut it in half, seems to me if I remember just right off the top of my head, this four ounces that I just used was 11 points. So cut that in half. You might could knock it down. I told you this is five points. It might be six. I will have the correct description box and um, the correct recipe on my website. So the next thing we do is we stick this in a 350 oven. About 20 minutes, all you're doing is melting the cheese, getting everything bubbly. And that's all there is to it. So I'll be back when it gets done. Okay, here you have it. 20 minutes right at almost 20 minutes just to get the cheese melted. Well, let's scoop one up and see how delicious it is. Uh-oh. You see that? That gooey cheese? You can't see it. <laughs> Listen, this is just par for the course for this video. Unbelievable. I hope you don't use this against me and still decided to subscribe. Of course, you know what? You're going to get the same thing, so who am I kidding? <laughs> there you have it. One spinach lasagna roll up. Let's see. Well, you can't see anything for all that gooey cheese. See the nice filling in there? The cheese got melty with the spinach. This is too hot. I'm not going to taste it. I've had it before. Like I said, we used to make it. I know it's good, so I'm just going to leave you at that. I hope you enjoyed this video, even with all its little warts, and I'll see you next time.